We're going to take a few moments and look at the characteristic curves of a transistor. Transistor simply looks like this. Its basic characteristics, we have a collector current, we have an emitter current, which is equal to uh, the base current plus IC, and in here we have a, a base current, IB. We will have a voltage across the transistor, voltage collector to emitter, and we also have a voltage between the base emitter, which is more or less constant. <coughs> So those are sort of the characteristic voltages and currents we could look at. And we also remember that there's a, a, a relationship on the data sheet, beta, which relates these two curves, the currents rather, and that's beta is equal to IC divided by IB. So if we were going to try and plot uh, some sort of sketch or curve that would show us how this transistor works, we would uh, start up by plotting two axes, just like we would in the case of, uh, of a diode. We would uh, plot um, on the vertical axis current and the horizontal axis voltage. Now then the next question comes to mind is which currents of the three would we want to plot? Well, considering that the base current is very small, uh, the collector current is very large, and there's a relationship between I and B, known as beta, that uh, it would be IC that would be the most natural to plot because this is where the load circuit is. The load is up here someplace, and so it would be good to plot the characteristics that are associated with the load. When it comes to the voltages, <coughs> the voltage from base to emitter is not particularly interesting because it, it remains more or less constant. So the voltage which is much more interesting is the voltage across the transistor, voltage collector to emitter. And so that's what we would plot over here, VCE. Now, because of this relationship, we note that uh, the collector current is simply beta times IB. So if we were to put in a specific base current, we would find that we'd have a specific fixed value of collector current. So this would be for IB equals something, or whatever the number might be. And if we increased IB, we would get another curve which would look like this. This would be an ideal transistor. And likewise, we get another curve that looks like this, and another one, and another one. <clears throat> and so now the question we might have asked ourselves is what happens at the extremes? What happens at this extreme over here when the voltage across here becomes very great? And what happens uh, in this region over here where the voltage across here becomes very, very small? <clears throat> we can imagine, first of all, looking at what happens if this voltage becomes very large, the diodes are simply going to break down. And what happens at breakdown is they simply short circuit, and so the current goes right through the roof. So we can imagine that if the voltage went too high, the current would just do this. Likewise, it would just do this. And so this region over here is simply called breakdown. The transistor simply fails catastrophically. Now, if we look at what happens in this region over here, we find exactly the opposite. We find that there's very little um, voltage across this transistor. And um, we discover that um, as we start off from um, increasing the collector current, it will rise up in an almost linear fashion to this point where this equation becomes true. So this equation is is true, but it's only true during certain regions. It's only true during this region over here. And this is the normal operating region of the transistor. <clears throat> so this area over here is where the transistor is passing as much current as it possibly can under the circumstances and it cannot cannot conduct any more current. So with this base current over here, this is as much as it can provide, it can't do any more than that. So this region over here represents saturation. That's to say the transistor is just working as hard as it can, it cannot possibly do any better than that. That's this whole region over here. 
Now, it turns out also that if we have a base current of zero, no base current here, there will be some leakage through here. So in fact, there is a curve which occurs right down here when IB is equal to zero. And that region over here, where there's no current flowing in the transistor at all, is when the transistor is off, and we call that simply cut off. Transistor is cut off, it's not working. If we were to take a look at a very simple circuit, let's say we have a collector resistor, we have a resistor perhaps in the emitter, the ground, a VCC, we have something in the base, RC, RE. We can uh, plot on here the limits or extremes of how this transistor will operate. For example, IC maximum occurs when VCE is equal to zero. When this voltage here drops to zero, the current cannot possibly get any larger. So IC max is equal to VCC divided by RC plus RE. And that's going to be up here someplace, some number, IC max. Now, if the transistor is off, that's to say when I C is equal to zero, transistor is now cut off, then VCE is equal to simply VCC. Since there's no current flowing in this resistor, this voltage and this voltage will be the same. And since there's no current flowing in this resistor, this voltage and this voltage will be the same. So the maximum collector tomato voltage is equal to VCC. And so that might be over here someplace. VCC. Now, if we were to join these two lines, what we would have is what's called a load line. And in fact, it's called a DC load line. And this shows all the places or operating points where that transistor will work at. Now, if we look at the biasing conditions for the circuit when there's no signal coming in, we will find that we are able to calculate what the collector current is, and the base current is, and so on. And that might be someplace in here. This might be the point where it's idle. So under, no condi under idle conditions, the voltage across the transistor might be that, and the current of the transistor might be that. And so this point would be called the Q point. Q point simply means quiescent, or all quiet point. So this is the standard transistor characteristic curves that uh, help us identify exactly what a transistor is doing at any given time.